So first, let me tell you a little bit about Geeks Without Bounds. If you were in the session the last hour um, in the big plenary room, um, you might have heard Stephen say, we need a nonprofit organization that can build the software that isn't going to be built by for-profit companies because there's no profit motive in it. That's what we do. <laughs> Geeks Without Bounds supports humanitarian open source technology through a combination of hackathons and an accelerator program. What that means is that we uh, work with NGOs around the world, government agencies, uh, UN agencies, and also just concerned citizens to spec out challenges uh, on a range of issues. It might be a medical issue, it might be a civic engagement issue, it might be um, dealing with rural water uh, infrastructure maintenance, uh, disaster response. We do a lot of disaster response technology. So we spec out the challenges and then we take those challenges to hackathons. Now, for those of you who know what a hackathon is, wipe that image out of your head for just a moment. And let me explain what a hackathon with Random Hacks of Kindness and Geeks Without Bounds is. So this is a weekend event, usually it's on a weekend, where we bring together uh, technologists, designers, subject matter experts, and just ordinary people who are simply curious about what we're doing um, into a space. We spend a few hours having the subject matter experts teach the people about what the real challenge is. This is what we're really facing on the ground. This is what uh, we're already doing to solve this problem. This is where it's working. This is where it's not working. Then the subject matter experts, along with the designers and the ordinary people on the street and the technologists, break up into teams and start working on prototyping possible solutions to these uh, challenges. Uh, throughout the entire process, the subject matter experts aren't there just as judges, they're there as participants in co-design. This is not about a marathon, this is not a competition, this is an opportunity to uh, volunteer your time to work on something. It's collaborative, not competitive. We also take projects that might have been uh, prototyped at one hackathon to consecutive hackathons. So we have major global events the first weekend in June and the first weekend in December every year. And then we also have lots of other one-off events that happen just in one or two locations at different times during the year to work on different kinds of projects. Um, so let's just take an example. Uh, there was a water hackathon in London in 2010. One of the projects that was pitched there uh, was this PhD student, a cartographer, had been down in Uganda mapping, of all things, flamingos. And he noticed that wherever he went, uh, there were broken water mains just in the middle of nowhere that nobody knew about. And if you continued on a mile, two miles, three miles, there would be a village or a town with no water. And the village or the town would not know why they did not have water. And nobody back in the city knew why the village or the town was using so much water. What was really happening was that there was a break somewhere. <coughs> and he didn't just see this once or twice. He saw it repeatedly in different contexts throughout his travels in Uganda. He came to London and he said, we need to find a way to let people who happen to be out and about and see these broken water mains to tell the authorities, this is broken, this is where it's broken, come fix it. So at that hackathon in London in 2010, they built something called Ta'arifa. Ta'arifa means information in Swahili. And what it is, is it's an application where you can uh, send an SMS, just a regular old SMS that you can do with any dumb phone, right? Uh, that goes into a, a system, uh, goes into a database. There's a web front end, the 
the government can use to see where all of the broken points are. They can also either call in a contractor to go fix it, or they can send it an SMS out to tell a specific contractor who's close to it to go fix it. The contractor can then send a message back saying, I fixed it. The initial reporter can, can depending on whether it's turned on or not, that's a different issue, uh, <laughs> can get a message back saying, it's fixed, will you uh, verify? So there's a full cycle back and forth in order to track getting something fixed. So a prototype was built in a weekend. Three months later, it was managing water systems throughout Uganda for the next two years. Um, let me tell you that this is a bad idea. Don't ever launch something after one weekend of development. Bad idea. Um, but the good news is <laughs> that even though it was launched that quickly, um, because we take things from one hackathon to the next to the next, we were able to build on that community. Those communities are online participatory communities at the same time as being physical communities. Because while we have hackathons in person, the group in London doesn't necessarily ever get to see the group in Berlin face to face, or the group in Ranchi, India, or the group in Seattle, Washington, right? So we have all these different communities where we have anywhere from one volunteer to five volunteers who are all putting something into the project. Um, it might be that um, they have connections with, um, with government people that they can help open up the doors to pull this system into a new country. Um, it might be that they are really good at graphics, so they're doing the graphics. It might be that they're a programmer. Um, you know, the, the whole thing is written in Python. Uh, Flask, if any of you happen to be Flask programmers and want to work on this, um, we are working on uh, some adjustments to the system in uh, Tanzania, where we're about halfway through a rollout, a much cleaner rollout of the system throughout Tanzania. So how do we bind these communities together? Um, if you only have the, the in-person piece, then um, you, you lose out on all the connections across the countries. And also, if you only have the in-person piece, then you've got a bunch of people in London deciding how to fix a problem in Uganda and Ghana and Tanzania. And I don't need to explain to you guys that that just sounds like colonialism, doesn't it? So, so how do we bring this to um, the people of Uganda and the people of Ghana and the people of Tanzania to decide how they want to actually make this product work, um, how they want to, to work with the system, and uh, in as many cases as possible to actually uh, improve their, um, their local capacity to build these things themselves. And this is where the online participatory culture comes in. Um, so we use a lot of different tools. We rely on Google far more than I would like to. In a perfect world, um, we would have a, an other option, a totally open option that we could get everybody onto. Team. <laughs> um, and we have to use a lot of other tools um, so Google Hangouts works really well in first world countries, works terribly uh, in a lot of uh, low resource countries. Uh, in India, it's next to useless. In Tanzania, forget it. Skype, however, works really great in those places. So, so you have to be able to like move from one piece of technology to the other. So one of the challenges that we have is how can we unify those things um, so that all of our different pieces of community can talk to each other better? Because in addition to having a project like Tarifa, 
where we've got these developers in lots of different locations, and we've also got deployments in lots of different locations. Um, like, how, how do we both have all of the people within Tarifa being able to talk to each other on the same platforms, but also how do we um, help all the people working on Tarifa to also work with um, our teams in Ecuador and Guatemala, which are working on completely different water-related projects that might also benefit from the knowledge and experience that the older, more established Tarifa team has. So those are you know, some of the things about the, the cultural issues that we're dealing with and the challenges. And I will let the next person speak.